automation and robotics. Mixing the aforementioned Omega Garden system with automation and robotics allows the facility to run completely without the need for a human labor requirement, aside from the initial construction of the facility. The rotating cylinder system provides sustenance for the plants. The fish farm is, the reg is regulated by filters. The movement of cylinders that are ripe for harvesting can be done by overhead grappling systems, and the harvesting itself could be accomplished by dexterous robotic arms with human-like hands and sensitivity, giving them the ability to pick, place, and replant the cylinder. The placement would be in baskets that would run on a small conveyor belt system, guiding the plants through a washable cycle or a washing cycle before moving them to the adjacent farmer's market area, which is a separate but connected building where the people actually get the food they need. At no time would people have to enter the actual growth part of the facility, unless maintenance is required. The entire process is computer controlled for high precision, up to the point that people will know when the building will harvest and supply the next rotation of crops, because a monitor attached to the building will show them the upcoming crop cycles for the next month or two, almost like the arrival and departure system used by airports. Powering the facility. The power requirements for the facility can be fulfilled such that the building is completely self-sufficient and off the grid, if the grid exists at all. This allows the facility to be placed literally anywhere in the world to feed any people, anytime. In short, the building would be a hybrid solar, wind, and battery-powered facility the batteries being nothing more than a backup system in case load demands manage to exceed the solar and wind system capabilities. This situation would only possibly arise during harvesting times when the robots are most active, and only if multiple harvests occurred at the same time, which would be avoided as much as possible via crop cycle monitoring and rotation. In general, the building is a very low power passive facility the robotics lying dormant in sleep mode when not in use. The only constant power sinks would be the carousel systems, pumps, and atmospheric monitoring and control systems. The details of the power requirements will be determined by the design of the facility, which will be completed by a team of engineers. I can only do so much as a lone humanitarian, and even though I could do all of the analysis, it would take me quite some time by myself as my free time permits which is why I feel that working with the UN could make this happen faster, which is good for the people who need food immediately. Scalability and yield potential. Vertical farming is not a new concept, but sometimes the drawings so showcase skyscraper buildings that almost instantly call into question the cost of such facilities. There is little need to make 50-story buildings to bring about the eradication of hunger around the world. What's necessary are smaller, more locally driven buildings that cater to specific regional needs. Additionally, there is this notion that the building must exist to facilitate natural sunlight as a means by which to grow the food. But in the previous sections, I showed how, the, that, how this is not the case. Artificial light is just as good, if not more so, because it can be directly controlled for the benefit of the plants. And the old argument of powering such a facility is no longer a valid argument when one considers all the clean energy options available that can work together to provide more than enough energy to run the facility. Additionally, depending on natural light automatically adds a geographic restriction to where the facilities can be placed, and seasons and weather conditions add additional impacts to the efficiency and productivity of facilities that are dependent on natural sunlight. With that said, here is a plausible scenario to consider regarding the yield potential of a simple vertical farm facility using the technology I've already presented. This was the scenario that I used when discussing the sustainability of food production in my lecture given at the Co Switzerland Initiatives of Change Conference on Friday, August 6, 2010. The basis of this scenario uses a 10-story vertical farm facility that assumes a one-acre footprint basically a 200 by 200 foot building, most of which could be underground for security purposes. Each floor houses enough Omega Garden systems to have the equivalent farming surface area of 10 acres. Therefore, the entire building represents 100 acres of farming surface area. Since the plants in this system grow to double their normal size relative to using traditional farming methods, the equivalency is doubled to 200 acres. 
Factor in the three to five time growth rate increase, meaning that in the time it takes to grow something in one standard crop cycle, you can actually rotate three to five crop cycles in the same amount of time, and this increases the yield potential to between 300 and 500 acres. I used 400 acres to split the difference. Knowing this, consider the following scenario. According to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, one acre of land can grow 20,000 pounds of potatoes. Potatoes are typically sold in five-pound bags for a family. So by those numbers, one acre supplies potatoes for 4,000 families. Therefore, just one vertical farm building with a 400-acre equivalency would then supply potatoes for 1.6 million families. The average family size in America is three people, meaning 4.8 million people would be fed by this one potato building. It can also be looked at in a different way. 96 plants can be grown per cylinder. There are four cylinders per rack. There are six racks per stack. Therefore, each stack produces 2,304 plants. If you have 200 stacks per floor, you can grow 460,800 plants. If you have 10 floors, that's 4.6 million plants of one species. However, for the sake of diversity in the system, each floor could grow a different plant, fruit or vegetable, meaning one building could provide 10 different species of food for over 450,000 people. Looking at just a single story building of similar dimensions, 200 stacks on the floor could be subdivided into 10 different plant species, 20 stacks per species. Since each stack yields 2,304 plants, this provides food for just over 46,000 people per species. And there are 10 species grown in this single story building, all requiring little to no human labor requirement for the production of the food. This system can be scaled down for smaller regions or up for mega city populations by just constructing more buildings. Summary. The analysis above should leave you shocked and amazed. We have the technical capability to seriously wipe out hunger in the world, but we cannot rely on old world methods to accomplish this. Food can be made abundant for all people, and it is time that we start doing so. As I mentioned early in this paper, the fact that we humans have allowed such an essential necessity for life, food, to become so grossly mismanaged and profit-driven is a serious moral and ethical question that needs to be addressed, especially given the technical capabilities I've shown that can locally produce vast amounts of healthy, unmodified, organic food for the world's people without the need for human toil. The time has come to do the right thing, and I, for one, refuse to sit back and patiently wait for someone else to do it. However, in order to magnify my efforts, I would prefer to work with the United Nations and lead a team whose goal would be to have an operational facility in place within a year. The next step is the systematic development and establishment of these facilities around the world until not one human being goes hungry. I truly hope this paper strikes a chord with the United Nations, so much so that we can work together to make this vision a reality and relegate the hunger issues of the world to a page in the history books. I thank you in advance for your time and consideration. Respectfully, me. My little signature bit. <laughs> Respectfully, me. me. Yeah, I can yes. see you doing that in front of the <laughs> right. United Nations. Oh, it's me. Well, that's all you had to say. I mean, you're yes. me. That's awesome. Um, yes. So, uh, you know, Douglas Millett, email, phone number, title, mm -hmm. space advocate, speaker, link to my book, stuff like that. My business signature, I guess you could say. So that's uh, that's the report that I sent off to the United Nations uh, contact. And yes, I did get a response back already this morning. She got it. She liked it. She's forwarding it off to the New York office, which is where they actually do the food stuff. They don't do that part in Geneva. That department is in New York. So I'm expecting to get a contact back from the New York office, hopefully within by the end of the week. Mm 